there's Frisco in the distance. See it? We're at the San Mateo Bridge, ladies and gentlemen. I'm waiting to pay my toll right now. This is the San Francisco Bay. It's a good bridge. It's about a couple miles long. And I'm going to refilm it again because my footage was stolen. My camera was stolen a few months ago when I filmed the bay and the bridge. So we're trying to do a take two here. And you'll understand when I integrate it into Parissima and all that, what's going to go into this. Because because we kind of want to show people that you got to cross the bay to get into half. you got to cross the San Francisco Bay to get to the ocean and therefore Half Moon Bay which Parissima is an old settlement or ghost town, which has been absorbed by Half Moon Bay. And that's where we're heading right now, Half Moon Bay to bunk up for the night. So let me pay my toll. Hi. You too. Okay, so away we go. Let me roll up my window so you guys can hear me. Just a little bit. And this is about a five-day trip that we're on. And what we're going to do... Is tomorrow we're going to work with the ghost town of Parissima. We're going to work with the ghost town of Parissima. It's our second expedition or adventure there. We're going to journey into the Parissima Redwoods Preserve, which is above the town or the ghost town. And then we're going to head into Santa Cruz tomorrow. Santa Cruz is notorious for having the most serial killers back in the 60s. They had a lot of serial killers, a lot of murders, a lot of mysteries. Um, Alfred Hitchcock wrote some of his stories in works in Santa Cruz. There's the Rispin Mansion, which has recently been boarded up by the city and got cameras. And There's a security guard, so I cannot do the 22-room Rispin Mansion. But what I can do in Santa Cruz, I got two cemeteries which are haunted. And the cemeteries have two really, two to three really good ghost stories. And a lot of ghost stories for decades are decades old. They're not just made up. And so we're going to do a couple cemeteries in Santa Cruz. The mystery spot. I'm going to visit the Bigfoot Museum because i got a friend who knows the owners. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the Felton Old Bridge. It's a, it's a historic bridge. It's a, a wooden bridge that crosses very high up in this ravine. It's one of the tallest covered bridges in the country or in California <coughs> because of its height. And so we'll do Parissima, the ghost town, but I found something really interesting. I found where the cemetery is in the woods. And it's a creepy place with ivy growing everywhere. I found bones up in Parissima. I found the old sawmill. So we're going to revisit these areas because my camera was stolen. So all the photos, all the video, all that was stolen including the filming of this bridge and across the bay that we're on. And so we'll do Parissima tomorrow. We'll work with Parissima Cemetery. We'll work with the Redwoods. And then Saturday, we'll go ahead and we'll do the Mystery Spot, the Felton Covered Bridge, the Bigfoot Museum. Sunday, we'll do a couple <coughs> of cemeteries. We'll go to Natural Bridges State Park so you guys can see the ocean a little bit. Um, Saturday I'm going to go also to the Marine Center. It's free and you can pet starfish and stingrays and stuff. And then Sunday I'm going to go to the aquarium and I'm going to see sharks. And then Monday we're going to go to Angel Island. Angel Island's divided into four areas. The, the southern area is all the batteries where they had the guns during World War II. Then you have Fort Rawlings and East Garrison which is on the east end of the island. There's an abandoned hospital, barracks, buildings. It's extensive. We're going to do a ghost investigation of the buildings. We're going to do a quarantine station in North Garrison and the old immigrant station, the Ellis Island of the West. That's on the north side of Angel Island. And on the west side is Fort Reynolds, or they call it West Garrison, which is a Civil War fort, which has two of the finest Civil War buildings or structures in the state of California. So we got a jam-packed five days of fun. Some of it will be adventure, some of it will be hiking. I'm going to take my family to the Redwoods up in Santa Cruz. They have some Redwoods you can go see just outside of Santa Cruz. And I don't know if you guys know this or not, but ahead of us is the Santa Cruz mountain range. This is one of the 
creepiest, most paranormal mountain ranges in California. It's known for UFOs, hauntings, because of its extensive historical mansions up in the range, and train tunnels, which all have ghost stories, and old cemeteries. Bigfoot is very abundant in this range. This range, they compare this range to the Mayan and Aztec jungle. And I've off-roaded and I've hiked in it a little bit and it's very dense and there's not a lot of houses or towns throughout the range. So for about 50 miles of the range, is nothing but wilderness. And so we're gonna go delve into Ghost, Bigfoot, maybe even UFOs, and some other oddities. And this is gonna open up a whole new corridor Oh yeah, the bridge is starting to go up here. If, look, it's gonna open up a whole new series of projects for Tammy, Jared, and I, because this is only the beginning. If I come back out here next time, I'm gonna do the historic, haunted town of Carmel, which is near Santa Cruz, and not just Parissima, but we have other projects around Parissima we can do. This is only the beginning. Santa Cruz, Half Moon Bay, this is only the beginning. And this is my second expedition out here. And because my camera was stolen, I told Tammy, in the spring, we're going to come back here. We're going to do this place the way it's meant to be done. And I can guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be an impeccable adventure. This will be some of my finest work this spring is in the Bay Area. As we do Angel Island, the ghost town of Parissima, some creepy places out near Santa Cruz. Not just creepy but mysterious places. They don't have to be paranormal. We do all kinds of odd places. We do all kinds of places that are just, you know, have scientific explanations, but we try to explain it in, in layman's terms for people who browse our site and our videos. So, hang on. It's gonna be a wild ride. I'm gonna take you to the ocean. I'm gonna take you to Half Moon Bay. Because back then, you know how Parisimo started? squatters. They came in Parissima, they started a lumbering town, they also drilled for oil, and they started fighting with the Spaniards. It's one of the oldest, well the Spanish were here first, and this is one of the oldest, we're in San Mateo County, so where we're going is one of the oldest settlements in San Mateo County, Parissima tomorrow, and then we'll branch off to Santa Cruz, and we'll off-road up along, the, there's redwoods all throughout the San, you know, the Santa Cruz Mountains, and we'll definitely do some hikes, and I'll be looking for Bigfoot tracks, and we'll go to the Bigfoot Museum. It's going to be exciting, but I just crossed the San Mateo Bridge. This is the bay. San Francisco is off to the north, and you can see it's a long bridge. This is what you got to do. You got to cross the bridge to get to Half Moon Bay, and Half Moon Bay is just over the Santa Cruz Mountains, and it's almost dark, so Within an hour, I will take you guys up on the Santa Cruz Mountains, and I'll do a little film of the bay from above, because we will we will actually drive to the top of them. But anyways, I'm out of here right now. I just want to say peace. This is Lord Rick. Check out our site, www.paranormalghostsociety.org, your gateway to the adventure in the Wild West and more. Ladies and gentlemen, just real quick. There's PlayStation, and I happen to be a huge play Sony PlayStation fan. I have a PlayStation 3, 4, actually I have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Only 3 and 4 hooked up on my big screen. Just want to show you, we're in San Mateo heading to Half Moon Bay. You can see, folks, we're in the Santa Cruz Mountains. A lot of strange Bigfoot sightings occur up here, and if you look, I know it's kind of hard to see because I'm driving. But it's like a jungle out there. I mean, it's so dense. Any undiscovered species could live up here for hundreds of years and not be discovered in brush like that. Especially if it's nocturnal, you're never going to see it. But the Santa Cruz Mountains fascinate me because there's so many paranormal stories. And so what you guys are going to get to experience is not just the paranormal, but a little bit of urban exploring for my friends who like that kind of thing. And we're going to do some hiking up in these mountains. I don't know if I'll find anything. I have huge success in the Sierra Nevadas finding strange tracks and Bigfoot evidence. I don't know what kind of Bigfoot evidence I'll find here. But from what I've talked to other Bigfoot investigators, they said this is a great mountain range to look for Bigfoot. And so you can look right there. It's just, it's like a jungle. It's like a jungle. 
And this is only the lower part of the range. There's another whole region to this mountain range. You know, it goes for 50 miles on in. So anything could be up here. I, I like to keep an open mind. I'm not saying for sure Bigfoot's here. But I, I do know other experts in the field. And if they have had experiences up here, they are credible people. And I would hold them to it. But we got a storm coming in. You can see... You can see, it's just very woodsy. And it's not just woods. There's a lot of other foliage, foliage that grows here. And so we're gonna take Skyline, and I'm gonna take you to the top of the range, and we're gonna come, we're gonna descend down on the Half Moon Bay. But I got a lot of traffic, so the next time I film and take photos will be from the, at least the, the top of the range when there's less traffic. Oh, see, here's a Vista Point right here. Let me see if I can, sorry, didn't mean to scare you. Let me see if I can see what's here. Oh, this is the reservoir overlooks. But there is a better vista point a couple miles up the road. And so, real quick, I'll get out and I'll take a couple photos. And then we'll head up to the top. It's getting kind of cool out. It was so warm in Stockton, man. So the ghost town, it's not far from here that we're going to be exploring, but it's higher up in the range in the re near the Redwood, the Permissima Redwood Preserve. But we got a storm coming in, so we're going to have to play it by ear on what's going to transpire tomorrow. We'll get it done, but we're going to have to work with the weather a little bit. There's a lot of fog up here, folks. As you know, the San Francisco, Oakland, uh, San Mateo area, some of the foggiest, foggiest region in the world, really. I mean, there's always fog. And we're cruising in the... Oh, this might be a good spot right in here. We're cruising. Oh, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe. Yes. We can cut down. See? Well, somebody has to come take my pick, so... I just got to walk around the gate, and it's wide open. And I just want to show you, folks. It's getting really foggy. You can kind of see it. Look at that. Look at that fog. Just rolling across the Santa Cruz range. My son says it's like a jungle here, and he's right. That's why Bigfoot's so prevalent in the area. Basically, what you have here is, you, you wouldn't think so, but I call them Pacific Coast Bigfoot. Because these Bigfoot that are found here are found here along the Pacific Coast. And not just the Pacific Coast, but there's redwoods here. Therefore, you can see it kind of... That's the bay. Oh, there's San Francisco, too. Come on. My head's too fat. I can climb it and get it for you. Want me to? There's San Francisco. But this is what it's like hiking in this range, folks. I mean, it's like a jungle, basically. Well, yeah, I mean, there's... There's, there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings and strange things that go on in this range. And it is good to come out here and kind of take everyone to it. It's good to take everyone and give everyone a little bit of the grand tour of what this range and area is about. It's freaking cold, dude. It's freaking April, man. Dude, we can't see nothing back here. Here, dude, I'll just stand up here and you can take it. There's no way to see. You can see the reservoir through the trees. Yeah, it's a reservoir. Oh, that'll work.
just fell down. The fog it's rolling like up. It's a pretty little area. I mean, I've never seen foliage like this. It's like I say, it's like a jungle back here. Some of the plants that grow, I've never seen in my entire life till I've hiked back in here. It's like, no wonder why there's Bigfoot. Anything could hide back here and never be seen again. All this fog creeping across the road is crazy. I'm lucky I got a couple photos of the bay from up above. But this is the Parisima area, so people need to kind of see how scenic it is and what it looks like. You know, because when the people settled in this area here and built the town, this is what they would have seen. They would have seen... They would have seen this. Hold on. You don't need... You guys don't need to come. I'm just taking pics. I'm careful. There's nobody coming. the bay. There you go, folks. Lots of fog up ahead. That's why this, this range is known. It's notorious for UFOs. I, I've read multiple reports of Bigfoot and strange lights, credible ones, all up at the top of this range in the wilderness areas or above the towns. A lot of people in the local towns like Half Moon Bay or Santa Cruz have witnessed for themselves UFOs and multiple strange craft, things they can't explain. There's just a lot to see up here. and So we're going to mix our journey this next few days with a little bit of urban exploring and the paranormal. Just a little bit of both. But what a way to start off the expedition or the adventure driving in the Santa Cruz mountains with the fog just rolling over the road. It doesn't get any better than that. But this is why Bigfoot remains elusive. There's always fog up here. You're not going to see Bigfoot if it's foggy. You're not going to see Bigfoot at night crossing into the brush and disappearing into the mountains. It's all right here for the taking. And we're going to be working with this area in the future. So it's a very dense woods. And, and so anything can remain elusive out here. You just have to keep that in mind. That when we do these paranormal expeditions, we journey through various mountain ranges. At any time, anything could jump out in front of us. And it's unfortunate that our first... See, my footage was stolen. The rule is in the exploration community, you never steal another adventurer's work. They stole all my photography of flowers up here in November. Um, I took a lot of video and pictures of deer and does bucks and does along the road here, which I don't see any right now, but they should be coming out. It's almost 7 p.m. And they stole all that. And what's the point? You know, send me back my memory card. Those are my nature pictures. If not, fuck you. I hope I see you in the woods. I do. I really do. I hope I run into whoever took my camera in the woods so I can kick their ass. You don't steal another man's nature pictures. Go get your own nature pictures. That camera wasn't worth anything that was stolen. It was it was broken in the front because it fell and everything else. So its, it's monetary value was very little to someone who took it. However, its sentimental value was worth a lot to me considering I work hard to get pictures of flowers and deer. And, and you know, I fell in the ravine and I had gotten all muddy and parisima and I had thorns and my leg was bleeding. And I filmed it. I was filming when it happened. I'm like, oh, and you see me tumble. And these mofos stole my camera. It's like, let's see them go into the ravine and fall and film and have their footage stolen. People are snakes. Everybody thinks that they're going to get something. You know, you got crackheads trying to sell your camera. You got crackheads trying to sell your camera. Crackheads robbing your vehicle. Even in nice areas like this, in the mountains. That's why I don't like to be near cities. When I'm in the Sierras, the reason why nobody robs me is because there's nobody out there. Oh, the fog's getting thick. This is a redwood forest, and back in the age of the dinosaurs, there was millions of redwoods back here, millions. And now there's only a few groves remaining today. And most of them are new growths, first generation trees. But there are some third and fourth generation trees, you just gotta find them. 
There's also a hidden grove outside Santa Cruz. I don't know where that is. You have to get permission from the rangers. However, I do know where three groves are that will be going tomorrow and Saturday, which tomorrow is Friday, and then we have Saturday. So, yeah, it's starting to rain. The fog's pouring in. I always think I'm going to see Bigfoot cross the road. This is all new country for, for PGS, folks. It's all new territory. And unfortunately... I, I tried to do my best from the top. I did take some pictures of the bay, a couple pictures, but it's so foggy and cloudy. I was only able to get one or two of the bay, at least to show you what the bay looks like from up here near Parisaba, which is a ghost town, one of the first settlements in San Mateo County. But we're driving through the fog. I'm heading towards Half Moon Bay. This is your founder of the Paranormal and Ghost Society, Lord Rick. And it looks like we're in for a very rainy evening. We're going to check in at our hotel. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to get some Chinese food. Uh, there's a restaurant that I like here in Half Moon Bay. It's one of the best Chinese food out there. Is that an area? Nope. It's a corral with a house. But it's a nice Chinese restaurant. It's a good night. It's a nice night to break bread. It's rainy. It's foggy. We're just going to eat dinner. And then in the morning... When the sun comes up, we'll be out there hiking in the Parisima Redwood Preserve. Tanitas Creek Road. I think we need to take Tanitas Creek down. I remember we took it that one day. Uh -huh. And it got really bad. It's a concrete road. Bad. I remember we turned around and came back up. Uh huh. I see some light shining through. Wow. Look at this fog, man. Well, I need to get to Half Moon Bay from here, so you figure it out. Because <laughs> I would just take Tanitas Creek all the way down. That's how I, I am taking Tanitas Creek tomorrow on the way back from the hike. It's a main road. It's not dirt. It's concrete all the way. It might be narrow, but it's concrete all the way down the range. Because to our right's the bottom of the... There's a reason why we turn around. I don't know, but I'm not worried about it. I already have it on my papers to take it down. Because I'm going to go in a loop tomorrow. We're going to hike at two spots, and then we're going to loop back around to the ghost town. Sweat Road. But you get the idea, folks. It's rainy. It's foggy. My ears are not popping appropriately. This is the Santa Cruz Mountains. We're actually riding on top of the range. We're almost at the very top of this mountain range. And uh, it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, this is this is what you see. You see what you're seeing, folks? It's just a very dense woods. And it's known for its ghost, UFOs, and Bigfoot. It's one of the top strangest areas in the state of California. And I'm riding down the road less traveled right now. I showed you guys a little bit of film of San Francisco from up on top of the Santa Cruz range, which is what I wanted to do. And then I showed you guys the bay, and there's also a reservoir that's below the mountains. When you go through, when you go through San Mateo, it's a nice little lake or reservoir. It's very scenic though from up above. Very scenic. Which I showed you guys. And so the settlers of Parisima and creatures like Bigfoot, they have a nice view from up here. Because there's views in between the woods, there's views of the bay. Of course, with the fog and all, I don't know. What is this here? Oh, that's a... What? Let me check this out. There's a vista point right here. Yep. A lot of people parked here. That's strange. With the rain and there's a lot of people. Yep, it's a little vista point, and I don't think we can see anything. Look at that. Go take a peek real quick. Can't see much from the vista point. There's a lot of fog. We're at the top of the, the, top of the Santa Cruz range right now. 
Yeah, you can't even see the bay. If you guys look, there's the bay. Look how creepy that is. So folks, we're gonna head to Half Moon Bay. Thinking about taking Tanita's Creek all the way down and just cutting straight down the range and down in the Half Moon Bay. Of course, if I don't see Tanita's Creek, then I guess I'll be taking the highway back down. <laughs> but either way, tomorrow we will, either way we'll have to take Tanita's Creek. Because I'm going to loop around tomorrow. And it's, and then we're going to take Parisima Road to Tanita's. When we're done at the Redwoods, we're going to come down Tanita's Creek to, I want to film the old schoolhouse. Because on Tanita's Creek is the old schoolhouse for Parisima. It was one of the first structures built when the town was built. They wanted to build the school.